we are learning about section 9.6, which is about vectors in 3D space. So you're going to take everything you've learned about vectors so far and apply them to three-dimensional space. So the first thing you want to make sure you understand is what three-dimensional space looks like. So you can see here in the picture that it's kind of like you take your XY grid and you lie it flat, kind of like on your table. X will kind of be pointing out at you, to, out, like towards you. Y will be going off to the right and Z will be kind of coming out like out of the table, if you want to think of it like that. A vector then is just written in the normal, points and vectors are written in kind of a normal way. So a point is now x comma y comma z. So for instance, this point over here would be the point two comma three comma five. So this point would have been graphed by going towards you, coming towards you on the x-axis a distance of two to the right on the y-axis a distance of three, and then up using the z-axis a distance of five. And then we can create a vector out of that starting at the origin. So here it is. And this would be considered um, a, like a position vector that goes from zero, zero, zero to two, three, five, and then the vector would be written just like this. So here's the component form. Apparently we don't want to highlight today. There we are. So it, here it is in component form. So um, our formulas are pretty much the same as they would be in any other uh, type of situation. So I'm going to write the formula for a position vector. So here it is in component form. You would take the, I think I'm going to use my math type here. So you take the x's and subtract them, the y's and subtract them, and the z's and subtract them. So that would look like this. x2 minus x1 comma y2. minus y1 comma z2 minus z1. This would be the position vector in component form. And you could also write it in ij, and then it would be in k form. So you might have a vector that would be ai plus bj plus ck. All right, and then the magnitude for this vector right here would be the same as the magnitude for a two-dimensional vector, except you would have to take into account the z space. So, trying to get this to show up nicely here. So it'll be the square root of the x distance squared plus the y distance squared. For some reason, that's not staying underneath. There go. plus the z difference squared. All right, that was a lot of work to type that up. There is the magnitude formula. Okay. So let's use those formulas to find these pieces of information here. So we want to find vector u, which is p1, p2. So I'm going to just do this in component form. So it'll be so it's starting at p1, that's your initial point. So it's the terminal minus the initial. So it will be 
zero minus a negative three, three, five minus one is four, and negative one minus four is a negative five. So u is equal to three, four, negative five. And then v is the vector that starts at p2 and goes to p1. So that is gonna go in the opposite direction, which means it'll be negative three, negative four, positive five. Those are both position vectors. Then if I want the magnitude of v, which would also be the magnitude of u, they'd be the same. That will be the square root of negative three squared, so nine, plus negative four squared, 16, plus five squared, 25, which, 9 plus 16 plus 25 is 50, so this would be the square root of 50. Feel free to just leave it like that. No need to simplify. Okay. This is the magnitude. This is the position vector. If I want a unit vector in the direction of u, then I take u and I divide by the magnitude, just like you would have done in the past. So same process that we've been using. So write that vector. I think I'll do i, j, k form this time. So this would be 3 over the square root of 50 i plus 4 over the square root of 50 j minus 5 over the square root of 50 and that's a k. So this would be the unit vector in the same direction as u. Okay, so nothing really has changed. So now we're going to fill in the dot product oops, formula, which is also the same. That is not going to change. So if I type in this dot product formula, remember the dot product is in the numerator, it is Nope, I'm giving you the wrong formula. The dot product is when you, let's type it in instead. Multiply the i's together, multiply the j's together, multiply the k's together, and add them together. So um, I don't really have vectors here to use. Let's see. Let's just go ahead and use, let me make some up. So let's say u is equal to abc and v is equal to xyz, then the dot product of u and v would be equal to ax plus by plus cz. that would be the formula that you would use. So two random vectors, the dot product is like from two dimensional space is you multiply the i's, multiply the j's, multiply the k's and add them together. Okay, moving on. So I didn't wanna show you that. Um, so now if I wanna find the angle between two vectors, the angle formula between two vectors formula in three dimensional space is the same as um, two dimensional. So I started off by writing that here at the top. So I got a little more organized on the second screen here. So my computer is going really slow. So here's the formula. So remember that the angle between two vectors can be found by saying that the cosine of the angle is equal to the dot product. So maybe make that bigger, that's a dot product. U dot V divided by the magnitude of U times the magnitude of V. So if I have these two vectors, U and V, the dot product of U and V will be two times two is four, negative three times five is a negative 15. And six times a negative one is negative six, and I'm adding those all together, and that is giving me negative 17 here. And then the magnitude of u 
is 2 squared is 4 plus 9 plus 36 is 49, and the square root of 49 is 7. And then 4 plus 25 plus 1 is 30, so the square root of 30. So here's our ratio, and then the inverse cosine of that is 116.321 degrees. Okay, so this is the angle between two specific vectors, but sometimes it's helpful to understand the angle that the vector makes based upon each of the axes. So since we're in three-dimensional space, we have three different axes we're talking about. So if you look over at this picture here, if u is the vector we're talking about, then the angle between u and the x-axis, it's always hard to see here, and if we were in class, I would actually be holding up some stuff to show you, but so that would be kind of like a sideways angle almost between u and x, and then between u and y is this angle over here, and then the angle between u and z is right here. And you can see by the labels that each of them has a special Greek letter that is associated with it. So alpha is the angle between the vector and the x-axis. And then the angle between the vector and the y-axis is beta. And then gamma is the angle between the vector and the z-axis. We can describe, um, so a separate thought here, you can describe the x and the y and the z-axis all as unit vectors. So we're going to describe each of the axes as a vector, and then we're going to use um, that vector to help us find alpha, beta, and gamma. So the x-axis is just the vector 1, 0, 0. And the y-axis is the vector 0, 1, 0. And the z-axis is the vector 0, 0, 1. So you have these three vectors that represent the three axes, and then you've got these angles between the axes and this vector u. So if you wanted to actually determine what alpha, beta, and gamma were, then you would still use the formula for finding the angle between two vectors. It's just that the x-axis would be one of them, the y-axis would be another one, and the z-axis would be the third. So these angles that we're talking about here are called direction angles. So if you're asked to find a direction angle, it would be finding alpha, beta, or gamma, and it'd be using one of these three formulas. So to find alpha, you're going to do cosine of alpha is equal to, and you're going to do the dot product of the vector, what we're calling u, times the vector that represents the x-axis, which is 1, 0, 0, divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of the vector that represents the x-axis, which is just 1. And then the same thing. So here's beta. So cosine of beta, again, is the dot product of u and the unit vector that represents the y-axis divided by the magnitude of u times 1. And then, of course, the same thing for gamma. So make sure if you need to, you pause the video to write down these formulas. Otherwise, I'm going to go on and actually do a practice problem where we're going to find the direction angles. So there's three angles, again, finding alpha, beta, and gamma. So to find alpha, you are going to, in the numerator, do the dot product of the vector negative 2, negative 2, 4, with the x-axis, which is 1, 0, 0, divided by the magnitude of the negative 2, negative 2, 4 vector, which happens to be the square root of 24. So you're just doing some calculations in your calculator. So dot product of this is just going to be the um, i component of this vector. So negative 2 over root 24 gives us 114.095 degrees. Beta is going to be the same angle because it's actually the same numeric value. So it's another negative 2. So we get the same angle here. And then gamma, get this thing out of the way, dot product of the negative 2, negative 2, 4. But it's really only the 4 that's going to be used here because it's dotted with the 1. 
and you end up with an angle of 35.264 degrees. All right, I'm not gonna talk through the second example. I'm just going to show you the work that goes along with it. So here's the work for each of the angles. Um, stop and write it down if you need to. Um, but I'm gonna go on to the next page. Okay, so this is really what you're gonna need for tomorrow. And there's also some other, there's some other videos on there that'll help you understand this topic. This is not related to vectors yet, but it will be for tomorrow's video. So last year in honors pre or sorry, honors algebra two trig, you should have learned how to find determinants. So this is what we would call a two by two determinant. And the formula for finding a two by two determinant looks like this. So you have four numbers, A, B, C, and D, and you multiply the A times the D. So that's here. You multiply the B times the C, and that's written here, and then you subtract the two numbers. So for this first one, we have three times one, which is three, four times two, which is eight, and you subtract the two for negative five. The second one, two times three, which is six, minus one times negative five, so minus a negative five, which gives us 11. And then the last one, eight times a negative two is 16, and then zero times three is obviously zero, which gives us a negative 16. So you need to know how to solve a two, dot, two by two determinant to be able to solve a three by three determinant. So we needed to kind of review that first before you look at a three by three. And the three by three is really what we're gonna need for tomorrow's lesson. Tomorrow is gonna be using vectors. These are just numbers. So it's a kind of a basic introduction here. So it looks like a lot of letters and stuff. I'm gonna show it to you with all of the letters and then I'll just talk through the process. It's not as bad as it looks, I don't think. So basically when you're solving a three by three determinant, you are actually creating three smaller two by two determinants. So what happens is you start with this first value here. So it's called A in my formula and A gets written here. And then whatever is in row A, we ignore and whatever is in column A, we ignore. And what is left over down here goes into its own little two by two determinant. So A went out front, cross off the row, cross off the column, and you're left with this two by two determinant here. Then you repeat the process. So let me get rid of this thing. Now we're gonna go to the B here, and we'll cross off whatever's in B's column and whatever is in B's row. So B goes out front, the opposite of B actually goes out front. So there's that negative sign there. And whatever's left over goes in its own two by two determinant there. And then we look at the C value in the first row. So cross off the row and cross off the column. So C goes out front here and we are left with another two by two determinant. And then you're gonna solve each of these two by two determinants and it's all gonna add together to one numeric value. So we're gonna do this problem over here. You're gonna see the work for this problem over here. Okay, so step one is to create all these two by two determinants. And again, I'm gonna talk through what's already written here. So you start by using the first number in the first row and it goes out front here. And then you ignore the rest of that row and the rest of that column and you're left with a new two by two determinant of negative six, two, five, and seven. Then you go to the second number in the first row, cross off the rest of the row and the column and you're left with four, two, negative one, seven. That's what goes in the two by two. And the second um, determinant here is always the opposite of what you see over here. So this was a positive one, it becomes a negative one here. Then we again go to the third number in the first row, cross off the rest of the row and the column, and you have a negative three out front of the two by two, and what's left over four, negative six, negative one, five, is your third two by two determinant. Okay, so now once you've got all of those written out, now you're actually going to evaluate each determinant. 
So it's two times, and then it's negative six times seven, negative 42, always minus, so minus 10. Negative one from out front, and then four times seven is 28, minus two times negative one. Negative three from out front, four times five is 20, negative one, negative, sorry, four times five is 20 minus, see, look at, I made a mistake here, minus negative six times a negative one is actually a positive six, so it should have stayed as a negative here. I technically have three negatives, which is gonna stay as a negative. Okay, so that's gonna change my answer underneath here. Let's see what we've got. So now I'm just simplifying. Okay, so this number is wrong. So I have this first part becomes a negative 104, and then this part becomes a negative 30, and then I've got negative three times a 14, which is negative 42. So now I've got negative 104 minus 30 minus 42 is actually negative 176. Okay, that's just a brief introduction. You'll learn more about this tomorrow. Make sure you email with any questions.